Happy New Year. Welcome 2014. My name is Tony, the Toastmaster de Leon, and I am the host of today's Toastmasters Beta Bay, where we feature Toastmasters from San Francisco to Monterey. Today we have a great show. These are speakers that I've seen in speech contests, and I find it's a great way to learn from others and also get entertained. Our first speaker today is working out of the Confident Communicator Manual, and the project is called Your Body Speaks. Our first speaker, speech is called One Monday Night. Let's please welcome Cody Katula. I got to go to a Monday night football game, the 49ers versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not much of a football fan. I used to be when I was younger, but now not so much. Still, when one of my bosses at work says he has an extra ticket to the game and do I want to go, I say yes. <laughs> Even though I haven't watched a 49ers game all season. And after I say yes, I immediately have second thoughts. I mean, sure, the ticket's free, but I'll still have to buy food, get something to drink. That's $20 right there. Plus, it's cold at Candlestick, and all I have is a light jacket. I imagine myself high up in the stadium, watching a game I don't care about, cold, hungry, miserable. Man, am I wrong. These aren't regular tickets. These are corporate tickets from a vendor <laughs> that we do business with. Each one comes in a plastic holder with a lanyard attached so that you can wear it around your neck. The guy at the gate doesn't even inspect them. He just waves us through. And once inside the stadium, we don't go up. We go down toward the field. Down, 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 down. I keep expecting somebody to stop us, but nobody does. We reach the last row of seats. There's a chain and a guy on a yellow windbreaker with security printed across the back. He lifts the chain and a smiling woman in a blue fleece jacket pops up. She introduces herself as Barbara and thanks us for coming to the game. She thanks us for coming to the game. <laughs> we step past the chain and Barbara leads us down the stairs into the suite and it's like descending into a kind of sports fan fairy tale. She points to a tunnel at our left and says, that leads to the locker room. Make sure and stay out of the way when the players come out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bartender serving free beer and other drinks. There's a row of silver warming trays filled with stadium food. We walk past the bartender, past the food, climb a short set of stairs, and emerge at field level. The goalposts loom above us. We are 10 yards from the end zone. This is where we'll watch the game. But before that, Barb says that we can walk around the field if we want. <laughs> I do want. <laughs> I walk around the entire field, taking pictures of people I don't even know. Any big guy, in case he might be somebody famous. <laughs> I take pictures of everything. I even take pictures of the little camera that runs on wires and zooms all over above the field. Back in the suite, there are other people along with me and my coworkers. Some of them act like being there is no big deal. I don't even try to play it cool. When Dwight Clark, the hero from the catch, shows up, I get his autograph and take a picture with him. In the picture, I'm smiling like I've just met Dwight Clark. <laughs> Once the game starts, it gets even better. On the Steelers' first drive, the 49ers make an interception in the end zone right in front of me. <laughs> I am so excited that I can't stop jumping up and down and high-fiving people. <laughs> Woo! During the television timeouts, the cheerleaders come out and they dance right in front of us. They are so close that we can see that one of the cheerleaders has missed a button <laughs> on her little Santa's helper outfit. 
My boss is so drunk by now on the free beer that getting this cheerleader to fix this sartorial mistake is his highest priority. <laughs> button! You missed the button! <laughs> it's like a dream. At this one moment, you have everything that you want. There are thousands of people in the stadium around you whose lives at that moment are not as good as yours. <laughs> you have everything that you want, and there are still people in blue fleece jackets coming up to ask if you want something more. More food? More beer? Can I get you anything else? No. Everything is perfect. Except that I am a little bit cold. And then I see a guy come up the stairs, and he's got a red fleece bag. He opens the bag and pulls out a fleece hat, scarf, and gloves. And I think to myself, hey, how come he gets that? And I go down the stairs myself into the suite, and I notice red fleece bags and gray rolled up stadium blankets lined up along the backs of the padded benches. There's a woman in a blue fleece jacket getting drinks for someone. I go up to her, and I ask her, if we can have one of those bags and a blanket. And I expect her to say, no, those are only for some of our guests, not you. But she says, yes. She says, take as many as you want. <laughs> now, I've got one head, one neck, and two hands. I need one gray blanket and one red bag. So when it's time to leave after the game, I take six red bags <laughs> and seven blankets. <laughs> yes, I took more than I needed. But those weren't just bags and blankets. They were souvenirs, reminders of that incredible Monday night and the amazing things that can happen when you say yes. Mr. Toastmaster. Great job, Cody. Okay. Cody, can you tell me how long you've been a Toastmaster? Two years. And what club do you belong to? Golden Gate Toastmasters. What makes that club so special? It's an incredibly supportive environment. We have uh, always have new guests. We have people coming in all the time, and it's just a really dynamic, fun club. When a guest comes to visit your club, can you give the audience members here a tip on how to uh, give that member a better experience? Make sure that you go up to them and that you sh shake their hands, look them in the eye, and welcome them, and welcome them to Toastmasters, and ask them, hey, what you brought you out tonight? Fantastic. Now, I saw you give this speech during contest. Yes. What inspired you to give a contest speech? You know, I really went to a contest. It was such a fantastic experience, and I thought to myself, I would really love to be up there, and so I just took the plunge and started doing a contest. Well, you did a wonderful job because uh, that speech, I'm a football fan, so you had me, and I'm the person that sits way up there. So to hear about that experience is wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time for our roll-in. We're going to take a visit, and we're going to go to Foster City and visit, visit a club that meets early in the morning. Please, let's have a look at Pro Masters. Oh. oh, I made myself a point of order here. My club is a morning meeting club. We meet once a week, every week. We start at 7.30, we end at 8.30. We meet at a cafe called Mimi's. We meet in the back room. They're very, very gracious to let us have the back room. And we also have a dedicated wait person. Uh, Nancy has been our wait person since the inception of the club. She's wonderful, she knows us all. She'll order your meals as soon as she sees you walk in. We actually have made her an honorary member, so we pay for her membership for Nancy to be a club member. If your speech is engaging enough, they put down their fork. <laughs> and they listen. <laughs> 
we definitely have a very friendly club. We all get along, we enjoy each other's company, which is part of the charm of this club. And it's not just about the speaking, it's about the leadership and getting to know people, networking for people who in this tough economic time may not have employment. Getting involved in Toastmasters gives you connections with people that do all sorts of things. We're very high energy, we're very supportive, we're very fun, and we're very humorous. I, for one, look forward to Thursday mornings, whether I have a role or not, because it's just so much fun. It's, we all care about each other in a way. It's kind of like coming to a party or a family reunion. It's really fun. Our club is, is very encouraging, and they encourage the new members to definitely take on their speeches quickly. Uh, it generates an interest and enthusiasm. And each additional uh, speech that you give brings an additional dimension. So by the time you finish 10, I believe, they try to make you a very uh, uh, well-rounded speaker. But also various dimensions of public speech, such as how do you evaluate a speaker? How do you listen? How do you do impromptu speech? At the same time, you also build network and connect with like-minded people who are interested in, in, in improving themselves and uh, make each of us a better person. I'll be a Toastmaster for life, and why? I believe that we can always improve our skills. There are several areas in my public speaking that I still think I can improve. We sometimes are spilling out of our facility because we have so many people. People will show up, they'll come visit, and they'll join. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it to anyone. I, I love Toastmasters. I use the skill set every day in my public life as well as in my private life, and I encourage anybody who has an interest in public speaking or fear of public speaking, come check out a club, join Toastmasters. Welcome back to Toastmasters Beta Bay. Now it's time to hear from our evaluator for Cody's speech. Please welcome from Orbiter Toastmasters, Anne Hu. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and Cody. Wow, a Monday night. What a day to spend a time to be a VIP in Candlestick Park. That's like one of the lifetime experiences and you felt so special. We have a great year for 49ers and this is just in time for that cheers and the excitement and all the benefits that, things that you had such a great time and you were so animated the speech topic was just great, and you had a vocal variety that was up, down, and then especially the moment when you saw the cheerleader with the button that was missing. That made me feel like I was just there, right there with you. There are something that can be improved upon. They're always, even for professional speakers. I thought that the hand gesture you have could be a little bit, little bit more dramatic because you were out in that big football field. And then especially when you met Dwight Clark, you had his autograph. All that excitement, I thought you could have used this stage here a little bit more, walk around a little bit more, talk about the excitement you had, and then come over here with some other adventures you have, and then plus all that bags of goodies you have to take home with. Wow. You sure are a seasoned Toastmaster. You brought us there. You made me feel like I was there right with you, and you were such an animated presenter. I really enjoy your speech so much, and no wonder you were competing at the speech contest, and I look forward to seeing you in future speech contests. Mr. Toastmaster.
Thank you very much, Anne. Our second speaker today is working um, out of the Compton Communicator Manual, Vocal Variety. His speech title is Searching for Speaker's Secrets. Please welcome Jason Lee. Jason Lai. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, oh, shoot, I messed up. Can we redo that? Uh, wait. Uh, one, one sec. Can you just give me one second? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Toastmasters, you have just witnessed a miracle before your eyes. Yes, it's the Toastmaster International Secret Speaking Water. It turns any boring, baffling buffoon into an articulate, eloquent, and might I add, dashing individual. <laughs> this can be yours for five easy payments of $49.99. But because you're here today at the Bay to Bay Toastmasters channel, you will get it for two easy payments of $29.99. <laughs> Any takers? Not found on QVC, nope, not on the Home Shopping Network, only here. Anyone? All right, okay. You caught me, there isn't this Toastmaster secret speaking water. But I realize that many of us are in search of this speaking secret. Some of us join Toastmasters for very honorable reasons. Oh yeah, I'm an engineer in the Silicon Valley and I just wanna learn how to present technical data to people. Um, and then, yeah, I'm a manager, so I wanna learn how to speak to my direct reports. I wanna learn how to speak to my kids. And then there are some of us that join Toastmasters for not so venerable reasons. Uh, I got nothing better to do. <laughs> um, yeah, this season of Dancing with the Stars, not so good. Um, yeah, I just wanna learn how to speak to girls, actually. Um, and my favorite was when I asked my friend if he wanted to go to Toastmasters. Well, duh, bro, what do you take me for, an idiot? I love toast. <laughs> but tonight, I want to tell you how I came about joining Toastmasters. It was a sunny spring day of my senior year, finished my finals. Everything was happy-go-lucky. Then all of a sudden, this cowboy comes up to me. Well, excuse me, sir. I ain't from around here, and my granny, she ain't doing too well. Do you mind sparing a couple dollars so that I could go see her? Um, oh, hold on, let me, let me check. Let me see. Uh, I only have a 20. Well, well, with all due respect, sir, that'll do. You certainly are a gentleman and a scholar. And might I add, a dashing feller? Well, you know, in my heart, I was about to say, I only have a 20, so you can't have it. But after his spot-on evaluation of my character, who could resist? So I gave him the 20, along with one of those politician nods and Tom Cruise smile. All right, this small change is a big change for us all. The next day, my roommate came up to me, and he said, Jason, Jason, you got to take a look at the newspaper. It's about you and the cowboy. And in my mind, I was just so amazed. I can't believe it. I could imagine the title already. Good Samaritan, humanitarian in the making, colon, an example to follow, the next presidential candidate. Jason, would you just read the newspaper already? Fine, jeez. <clears throat> Cunning cowboy scams students, colon, fools fall for a trick. Oy, I am so stupid. I can't believe I fell for that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, ah, geez, how could that happen? But then all of a sudden, my entrepreneurial brain started churning a little bit. Huh, not too bad. $20 in 20 seconds. Maybe I could give it a try. It doesn't have to be a scam. It could be a scholarship federation. The Jason Lai Scholarship Federation for Needy Children. It just so happens that 100% of the proceeds 
goes to one needy child. Jason Lai. <laughs> All right, so I guess Toastmasters International wouldn't be very happy if I was telling everyone to scam people. So public service announcement, please speak responsibly. Now this got me thinking. I realized, how do I find this speaking secret? So I do what everyone in my generation would do, consult an older, wiser, reliable resource. Not my father, no, no, no. Not my mother, but Google. <laughs> so I Googled, public speaking secrets, enter. And I came across this thing called Toastmasters. I was a little bit leery at first. Who are these bread baking, cookie loving people? <laughs> But eh, I decided to give it a shot and see what it's like. And I remember my very first night. Um, hi, everyone. Um, hi, I, sorry, I, I, I'm nervous. And it was weird. For the longest time, people thought my name was nervous. But then I decided to give it a shot. These Toastmasters had something up their sleeves, this secret to public speaking that I was sure to find out. So. After 52 speeches, 167 Toastmaster meetings later, I discovered your Toastmaster secret. And I'm going to reveal that tonight. Tonight, the secret to speaking. Oh, I can't believe it. It's just speaking. <laughs> just speaking. But I know that some of you in the audience don't believe me, so I came prepared with the Toastmaster catalog product 50305. Yes, it's the Toastmaster secret speaking dust. Now, after I sprinkle it in the room tonight, each and everyone watching this video, everyone in the room will become great speakers. Ready? One, two, three. Get some of that dust. <laughs> Jason Lai, how long have you been a Toastmaster? Well, Tony, I've been actually a Toastmaster for about two years now. And what club do you belong to? I'm actually part of two clubs, the JDSU Toastmasters, which is a corporate club, and also a bilingual club, which is called the Silicon Valley Mandarin English Toastmasters. Wow, that sounds like quite an experience. Uh, that's tell a mouthful, too. <laughs> tell me a little bit about that specialty club. The specialty club is a bilingual club, so it definitely helps me practice my Chinese and my English as well, too. Okay, that's wonderful. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for attending Toastmasters Bay to Bay. If you want to learn a little bit more about Toastmasters in District 4, d4tm.org. We have an evaluator for our second speaker. Please welcome Sheldon Gordon. Hello, Tony. I gotta say, I have been with Toastmasters 10 years, and Jason, I honestly thought when you started your speech that you really did screw up. <laughs> it took me in hook, line, and sinker, and I said, oh my God, this is being recorded and everything. No, we're live, folks. Okay. And it was, uh, yeah, really pulled me in. Great, great opening. You have wonderful animation. You have a strong voice. I think you desire to be an actor. I see Hollywood in your future. <laughs> Boy, I loved your, you know what I made your speech special? Your animation, the way you presented it. But number one, what is the heart of any good speech? Content. You didn't write this speech in 10 seconds. You spent a long time crafting this speech. I, my guess is you spent many hours writing it out longhand, tweaking it, tweaking it again, like any true professional will do. And I'll bet you even thought of other things 
that could make it a little better, and better yet, and you have tweaked this to perfection. I gotta say, it is one of the most fun speeches I have ever seen. Only things that I would say is every now and then, the big secret to public speaking is pause. So if once in a while, between your routines, after you've done this, just stop for a full second. It makes everyone so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I want to thank you for your wonderful entertaining, and I just want to know where the word oi is in Mandarin. <laughs> thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it. Thank you very thank much, Sheldon. Now I think it's time to wrap up the show. If you want to learn more about Toastmasters, you can visit us on the international website, toastmasters.org. Toastmasters has been around since 1924 and has been helping many folks over the years. We have clubs in corporate environments and we also have community clubs and we even have bilingual clubs, as Jason spoke of. I belong to a specialty club that's called Point of Order, and we practice parliamentary, parliamentary procedures. We read out of Robert's Rules of Order. I also belong to a community club, San Mateo Toastmasters, a club that's been around since 1941, and also has been serving the community for many years. It is a lot of fun. I encourage you to step out of your couch and visit a Toastmasters club. It's been a great, Happy New Year to all. <laughs>